It was made painfully obvious to me last summer when I said that Across the Spider-Verse was just okay and not the masterpiece that a lot of people claim that it was that I was going to be in the minority. You see, the difference is that I don't have an issue being in the minority because I'm not reviewing films just to fit in. I'm reviewing them to speak honestly about them and hopefully inspire some healthy conversation, although there was very little of that to be had around this film. One thing that I did say during my review is that I didn't think I was the target audience for that film, and I stand by that. If I'm being honest, the whole Spider-Verse Miles Morales craze is completely lost on me. And that's fine, I'm okay with that, even if some people are not. And then we have comments, like the ones made by the co-director of that film recently, that pretty much confirms a lot of my suspicions. And right now, I'm not sure who these movies are made for, but I know one thing is for certain, they are not made for me. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So at first glance, you would be inclined to believe that the target audience for the Across the Spider-Verse films is children. Considering it's an animated film with an army of Spider-Men doing a lot of Spider-Man That makes sense. I also understand that you are going to have crossover with a slightly older demographic of people who grew up as fans of Spider-Man. People that have a soft spot and great deal of admiration for animated films that push the boundaries of what animated films should be capable of. And even though Across the Spider-Verse was not really my cup of tea, I gave it props for doing just that. Sony Animation created a film that appeals to a lot of different people of a lot of different ages from a lot of different backgrounds. And honestly, the greatest animated films usually do just that. It always takes me back when I think about stuff like this to how Pixar used to be the masters of doing just that. They made films that appealed to children on a more basic level, and they also had ideas sprinkled throughout that appealed to an older generation of people who might be watching the films as well. Oh, oh. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. But with Pixar, no matter what the subject matter was, or no matter who they were talking to, it still felt wholesome and it still felt like they were staying true to who they wanted to be as an entertainment company. I can't say that Pixar is still that way, but their original form made them the gold standard. Which brings me back to the Spider-Verse films and the co-director of those films, Justin Thompson, did an FYC interview recently and he was asked about the internet reaction to Miguel O'Hara in the film, aka Spider-Man 2099. And this is what he had to say. Quote, I didn't expect it to be as big as it was, but I knew he was going to be appreciated. We set out with the goal of making Miguel a star. I like to say sometimes, that I set out to make him the biggest thirst trap in animation that had ever existed. Uh, why? Now I understand that simp culture is pretty far out of control at this point and it's something that desperately needs to be addressed in our society. But honestly, I had no idea we were at this point with it. I didn't even know that there was an internet reaction to this character that would warrant this type of question. We are at a point where the co-director of an animated film, to which I thought was targeted towards children, but now I'm not really sure, actually set out on purpose to make one of the characters of that film a quote-unquote thirst trap to somebody, which a thirst trap is described as a sexy or flirty photo meant to elicit a viewer's attention. He could have stopped at, we wanted to make Miguel a star. We wanted to make him memorable in this movie. If he had done that, I would be on board with what he's saying. But when you use the term thirst trap, unironically, red flags start to go up everywhere. Why are you the way that you are? Now, I understand that I am a part of a generation that makes memes about how big Rogue's ass was in the X-Men animated series in the 90s. But a lot of that is said in jest. It's funny to joke about how characters like that from our past could have somehow subconsciously influenced the way we look at women. But it's not really that serious. And again, we're making these jokes knowing better as adults. What's happening now with Miguel 
is taking things to a whole nother level. We have grown adults trying to entice other adults, I hope, with a f***ing cartoon character. And I'd like to say that this whole scenario was made up in the director's head, but there are people on social media right now who are basically confirming that they had this type of reaction to this character. Can somebody please stop this ride? I think I want to get off. Can someone please explain to me what the f*** happened to people? Too much time on social media? Too much weird fan fiction? I need to understand. I don't get it. To me, this is proof, once again, of adults inserting their weird sh** into places where it does not belong. It'd be one thing if you did it and left it up to interpretation, but he's actually coming out and saying that was his goal. Could you imagine for a second if a director said this about a female character? Fictional or not, that person would be crucified on social media. The double standards continue to roll out. God forbid if you're the type of person who says that sexualized characters in regular movies is okay. But apparently creating thirst traps in animated Spider-Man movies is completely normal behavior. I say again that people are f***ing weird and the fact that there are so many people co-signing this just confirms that. And then we have the second part of his quote, which if possible, is even more egregious than the first part. He said of Miguel, quote, he needed to be the alpha. If Peter Parker was like the ultimate beta, a guy who can't pay his rent, makes bad investments, and doesn't dare ask Mary Jane to marry him, then he wanted Miguel to be the exact opposite. <laughs> You serious? So basically what this person is telling me is they don't understand Peter Parker without actually telling me that they don't understand Peter Parker. He basically gave us proof of what I thought the entire time while watching the Spider-Verse movies. These people think that Peter Parker is a f loser. Now I would never come on here and say that Peter Parker is the most masculine character of all time because that wouldn't be accurate. But all of the things he mentioned as well as the things he didn't mention have perfectly reasonable explanations thanks to Peter being a nuanced character and not a thirst trap like your precious Miguel. Peter Parker's hesitation to pursue Mary Jane has always been about his desire to keep her safe. And that's not a beta characteristic to me. That's pretty alpha, actually. He's basically choosing his duties as Spider-Man over his own personal desires, over his feelings. I ain't got time to breathe. It's also the reason that he typically struggles financially. He can't apply himself to anything consistently work-wise because of the responsibility he feels to be Spider-Man. You ever get the impression that the people who are making Spider-Man don't really understand who Spider-Man is as a character? Or is it that they just want you to think that Peter Parker is a loser? Because that's the only way that modern Hollywood knows how to build up these newer characters. I haven't liked the way that Peter Parker was portrayed in these movies from the very start. And now I have confirmation as to why. I know a lot of you love these movies and still do. And listen, you have my support. I hope you continue to enjoy them. But right now, you couldn't pay me to get excited about another Spider-Verse movie. At this point, I don't trust the people who are making them. And I don't really trust segments of that fan base to not be weird and unstable. How can fandom be toxic? And as a longtime Spider-Man fan, I'm just looking for a little bit more from my Spider-Man media. If you want thirst traps, go on Instagram and TikTok because those platforms are filled with them. Don't bring your simping bullshit to Spider-Man, especially animated Spider-Man, because it's f***ing weird. This is why I say that sometimes gatekeeping is a good thing, especially if it means protecting a character or brand from people who are trying to turn it into something that it's not. Y'all be cool. Right on.